come together they asked him saying Lord will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel and he said to them it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth may the Lord bless the teaching of his word we're talking about seasons the day has its time night has its time rain has its time uh, um, different things come in their seasons and in their cycles and interestingly even man has seasons we've talked about how man man means morning afternoon and the well night night season of man to help us put and compartmentalize how our lives unfold but you also realize that in each of those three if you want to go with the morning the afternoon and the night season of man talking about our early days our midlife and then our old age you realize that in each of those seasons there are also seasons all right, right embedded in it at different times and across this building today we are all in different seasons of our lives but the first thing i want you to note about seasons is that god designed seasons for our good god designed seasons for our good there is nothing god created that was not created for our good in fact before god made man god made sure the sun was up the moon was ready the earth was ready the food was ready the fishes were ready everything the creatures were there before he created man so that man can have the benefits and enjoy everything everything was created for our good and i know that if you if you, if you take that for, 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 for a fact, you know that not every season seems pleasant. Okay, sometimes uh, people uh, have had conversation between uh, switching between seasons, you know, in the northern uh, um, hemisphere, you, you're just coming out of the winter season. I mean, it's been very cold. I mean, there were days when they had minus 45, some places in Canada and, and some other places had uh, storms and all those kind of things happening. And then at the same time in Nigeria, it was so hot that even Ibado recorded plus 34, plus 35, plus 39. It felt like plus 42. I mean, I remember flying in and, and uh, on this last trip and the captain was trying to tell us about Lagos. And like I said, we we're coming from minus 11, minus 2. And then he says, so we're approaching Lagos and the, uh, the temperature is like going to be plus 33. He thought he was giving us good news. Inside me, I was like, oh my God. You see, because once we landed from... from from we're taking off the jacket, you've taken off your shirt. I only had my had planned, I only had my t-shirt left. Pastor Lucy had a jacket on until after some time the jacket had to go too. It was hot. And people have asked me, Pastor, which one do you prefer? I said, I prefer the cold. If it's cold, you can wear more clothes. If it's hot, so you see, life <laughs> is designed to be like that all of those things but one of the things you realize is that whether the hot or the cold there's always a benefit in every season there's always something good happening in every season there's always fruits coming in every season not all fruits come at all seasons but for every season something's always going on are you with me right now look at it ecclesiastes chapter 3 says verse 1 it says to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven and so the lord said to me this morning to since to everything there is a season it means to every season there is a thing to every season there is a thing so whatever season of life you are in now there is a blessing there may you enjoy it now if it is not a pleasant season, sometimes we complain and we, 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 if it's a good season, that one is easier for everybody to understand. I mean, uh, okay, pastor, yeah, I'm enjoying it. But do you know even the bad season has its benefits? That there's something in it for you. So I'm trying to say to you, whatever season of life you are in, there is something good in it for you. Even the season this nation is, there is something good in it for you. Look at this. Paul would come into a freeze season, he would preach the gospel, establish churches. Then they would put him in prison and he would start writing letters. You see, because solitude allows him time to reflect, to think, and to become productive in a different way. 
John will preach the gospel and then they'll put him on the island of Patmos, isolate him. Book of Revelations came out from there. You see, because even what was supposed to be a bad season was something that has shaped the church for the last 2,000 years. I'm trying to make you see something. Uh, 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 it, it was David Yonggi Cho who broke down and broke down bad. He, he was so sick, his heart, it took him years to recover. He could not effectively pastor his church, but that's where house cell was birthed from. The time that he could not function, that's how God changed the entire face of the church through somebody's sickness. I'm trying to make you see something. COVID came. And COVID, with all its disruptions, helped some people to confront things they've been running away from. Families to face the issues. And some babies today have been born as a result of COVID. Amen? I'm telling you. So for every season that seems like a bad, if you're one of those who had babies, keep glorifying God. Amen? You know, I was talking to a nurse and she was telling us, you know, by, 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 uh, by b between January and and september 2021 babies were just popping 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 more babies because people had more time together amen <laughs> even covid had its good benefits you see some people needed to slow down they were too in too much of a rush i'm just trying to make you see whatever season you are in there's a benefit that may you enjoy it may your eyes see it now in the tough seasons it's difficult for us to appreciate what good can come out of it but I want you to know that God has a habit of making all things work together for good. So really, as I was praying this message, I felt God would have me say to somebody, prepare to get the best of every season of your life. Pastor Lou likes to talk to singles, matured singles, who feel by now I should be married. And she will say to them, enjoy where you are. Make the most of this single time. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Give yourself, pursue things like you couldn't be able to pursue. My mom went for our, our first degree when I was in the secondary school. She had, gotten, she had gotten married to my dad when she was having a grade two. And then by the time she had had me, had my sister, she couldn't continue. But by the time I was in secondary school, she went back to school. And then later on, she did a master's program. But it was difficult when the kids came. Not impossible, just a bit tougher. And so you realize every season, there is something you can do now. If your kids are young, that's a different season. There's something you can do. Stay at home mom, there is something you can learn. In fact, the world, if, if any stay at home mom who is telling us the reason they are not making any money is because they are home now. Everybody knows you are not serious. Because at home, miracles happen at home. Blessings happen at home. All kinds of virtual things happen at home. So nobody has any excuse anymore to tell us, eh, it's because, it's because, you know, no, those days are gone. There's so much you can do even from home now. Yeah, yeah. Nursing babies, and I remember this because Pastor says, especially those people who say, ma, ma, you don't understand, my baby, my baby, she says, play the audio Bible. Play the audio message. You see, that time, at least, as your baby is nursing, you might say it's not easy to read, listen. There's always something you can do everywhere and every time and make the most of it. i never forget how our younger son, you know how kids always like to claim the next birthday, claim the next birthday, claim the next birthday. And when it was, it was three, he couldn't wait to be four. He was claiming he was going before, he was before, and I was smiling. You see, because in my family, when you are four, you have what we call Mr. Do Good. Um, before you are four, we speak you know do but once you are four years old you qualify for a small tiny rod of correction so when he was claiming for inside me i said no no enjoy three enjoy three you see because when you are four the thing you did last week that we were just talking about no now you can get one two just two for correction amen if you don't get it forget about it and because every next phase has its own blessings and challenges. So you must enjoy where you are on the way to where you're going. Are you listening to me? So I was praying this morning that the Lord will open your eyes to recognize the benefits of this season. Don't be deceived with the pain and the discomfort you feel. You feel there is something about this season for you. It was Lake Alda that used to tell us how that in the difficult
difficulties in Nigeria, and we, we preached along some of these things, that if you track when, when Global Harvest Church was born in 1995, that when this church started, that year, he read a catalog of things that were happening in the country. They have been bomb blasts in the place. They are just, was about to kill, I think, Kensar Ruiwe or something. And all of that military was on. It was difficult and all of that. He said, yet God was planting this stuff, planting global harvest in the midst of all of that. So don't be deceived with all the pressure that God is still up to some things. May you be sensitive to him. Yeah, may you be sensitive to So I'm telling somebody right now, you feel like, Pastor, I'm just, I'm just managing in this shop. I'm just, no, oh God, there is a blessing in that shop. I know you're an attendant right now. The salary is not even much. Do the best you can there because only God knows what's coming next. We have one, of, one gentleman that Pastor Lo and I really, really appreciate and he used to work in a particular school and the man, all of us appreciated him. In that school, only God knows what his salary was. But the man had that swag to his assignment. His assignment was to call kids when parents arrived. Oh, the man got to a point. When he sees your car and he sees your face, he knows your child. Before you say anything, he's calling them. I mean, he knew the names. And parents from time to time would appreciate him and appreciate him until one day we got there and the man had left. Why? One parent came and gave him something bigger. Because he was doing that in that place. So God located him there. God will locate you where you are. Oh, I'm telling you because some people, their attitude is so terrible in tough seasons. You see, they have a job, they're doing a shoddy sh 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 job. They, they, they get contracts and because it's tiny, they mess it up. They don't know that, in fact, I'm telling you, life is cyclical. It's interesting. There's preparation and there's manifestation. Where you are right now may be a preparation for a great manifestation. Don't, don't, don't bungle it. Because the second thing I'm going to say to you about seasons that they change. It won't always be like this. There's nobody who went through just one season throughout life. Something always changes. And for you, it will change for the better. I said for you, it will change for the better. I said for you, it will change for the better. In the name of Jesus. So I want you to expect a change because seasons are designed to change for the better. And you know, as a, again, as a younger professional, I used to, and, and as a younger Christian too, one of the things I was confronted with was the question about if good things can continue. And I've heard people say, you know, uh, nothing lasts forever. Even good things don't last forever. And they, they say, and I, and I get where they're blowing from, but it's inaccurate. And this is what I mean. They tell you, look, if, if God is not Nepal, I almost made a post yesterday because in the last two or three days there's been power supply in my house in the night. I'll just wake up to pray or do something and I hear the gadgets are on. I'm like, there's light. If I like two days ago, I think it was Monday or something, I was home with the boys and all of a sudden light just came out. Like, there's light. What are we going to do now? I'm like, wait, what do we want to do with light? I mean, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I almost posted, we've had light for like two days old. And I, and I was thinking that I remember the joke. How that if they give you power consistently for 24 hours, people start saying, hey, this one that they've not taken this life for the last two days. Because you know by the time they take it, two weeks for two days. <laughs> so people say, hey, 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 this one that there's light, this one that there's light. We're even afraid that there's light. God punish the devil. Can you imagine? Pastor Lad and I were in Anambra about three weeks ago and we, we met this man who was from uh, Central Republic uh, Central African Republic and he told us how that he worked in Ibadan for some years and then he, he had his kids here and that I think he got back from work one day and Nepal brought light and his kids shouted up Nepal, he said he couldn't believe it you know, because he was hoping his children would not grow up into that but the kids still shouted up Nepal because they brought light. It was bad. It was bad. But see, those things give, put a picture or a trend in our hearts to think once good things are happening, be careful. Be careful. This one that just finished from school got a job like that and now you're married. Hey, 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 hey. Are you the only one? Yes. If you are the only one, Jesus will still have died. 
Are you the only one? Yes. God is so in love with you. Are you the only one? Yes. Unapologetically so because he is mindful of you. Are you the only one? Yes. You've been inscribed in the palm of his hands. You cannot be forgotten. Are you the only one? Yes. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you. Not some, not a few, but all the days of your life. If you use that shout, amen. Don't expect things to go down. Expect them to get better. He said they will follow you all. So it means if you enjoyed goodness yesterday, another one will come today. Another one will come tomorrow. Is anybody listening to me? You see, that is why Proverbs 4.18 is personal for me. It is a personal thingy. All right, because I saw how God tells us that the part of a just is as the shining light. It will shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Your tomorrow will be better than today. If every day and in every way, your life will get better and better. Every day and in every way, your marriage will get stronger and stronger. Every day and in every way, your finance will get better and better. You will become richer and rich. Where are the harvesters? As we are reaping souls, we are reaping miracles. You will be become wealthier in the name of Jesus you will become wiser in the name of Jesus your life will become better in the name of Jesus the seasons will become better yes 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 so you're expecting it to get better yeah seasons are never permanent they get better uh-huh they get better for the saints, you understand this next season. If it was not for your good, God won't let it come. I'm telling you something. If if God knew that the days ahead are not good for you, He won't let it come. He will even take you out. So we must trust God that when the seasons change, it changes for our good. Yeah, I know the weather became hot, and all of us. If only we, if we can be patient, we will find some good in it. There's always something in it. Always something, always something. This God is too much, too detailed to just let anything happen for nothing. Are you with me, church? Sit down for a minute. Let me show you something. I want to, I want to make a point and I need to get out of my time is up. Let me get out of here. But let me make a point. I leaned over. Okay, let, let me spare you all the conversation. Think about it. Uh, how many of you here, you are in this city with all your siblings let me see your hands up all your siblings all your, all your brothers and your sisters all of you are in Ibadan let me see your hands up all of you anybody like that let me see your hands, let me see your hands up ah, grateful to God wave your hands please God bless all of you alright put your hands up if, if not all your siblings are in Ibadan let me see your hands up not all of them okay okay very good watch this how will 12 boys become the nation of Israel? 12 boys. How will they have become a nation without Egypt? Without Egypt. Let me show you what's happening. There was famine. All of them went to Egypt. And then all of them were called the Israelites in Egypt. Before then, they were not Israelites. So it was Jacob, it was uh, Jacob, Geba to, to, to Reuben, to Simon, to this. All of them scattered. In fact, before they went to Egypt, somebody had already gone somewhere and gone to look for one girl somewhere. And no one had gone to, I mean, they were ready. So for them to become a nation, God had to send all of them. Egypt had a purpose. You see, that 400 years, there is no way they would have become one if they had not gone there. They would have scattered. You see, let me give you this picture. When you travel out of Nigeria to Europe, now UK is a bit different, but those days, if you saw a black guy in one corner, it doesn't matter whether it's from Congo or from South Africa or from anywhere. Once you see a black guy, in fact, the joke is, you are happy to see another black and then you know describe the guy from Jamaica. He's not even African. I'm like, ah, but at least he's black. You, you are just happy you're not the only one there. <laughs> are you getting it? So when they got to Egypt, they, they were all, they were into each other. You see, because as far as they were concerned, they were surrounded by foreigners. So they had to bond. The reason they were, you see, those of you whose siblings are here, I'm so happy for you. You see, because your, your children, they will know each other. 
They will know their cousins. But those who is, your, your sister is in Norway, that one is it. They, 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 they don't know their cousins. They don't. There's no way. Even the, the in fact, there was a joke that even if you can one day you won't go and marry your cousin. Because I've not seen each other before. We were just go crossing everywhere. Are you listening to me? So they have to be in one place for them to become a nation. So even Egypt had a purpose. I'm trying to make you see something. So what seems like a difficult time? Stay on it. There's something in it for you. There's a blessing attached to it for you. And Egypt won't be forever. Yeah, it won't be forever. They will go from there. Yeah. And, and, and that's why all the people disturbing this nation, they won't last forever. They will go. Nigeria will outlast all of them. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. They won't live forever. I'm telling you. I want to Niwala Rababa. No. No, don't, don't sing it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It was, it was an Aluta song. <laughs> All the people holding this country by the truth. I said Nigeria will not go. Ah, oh, Father. Ah, oh, my God. Babadi Len Kaling. Ah, 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 Katabalaba. Ah, Katabalaba. Holy Michael, Kowa Luda, Papa Luda. Ah, Katabala. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is well. This is, just, this is evangelism. They should just repent. Praise God. We should preach Christ to them so they give their life to Christ and we can go forward. Amen. <laughs> that God is working and doing something amazing in the land. So, the season will not last forever. It's going to change in your favor. Expect things to change in your favor. Women, listen, you're, you're blessed with a womb. It's only babies that you can carry. You have precious ideas and dreams. Birth them. God will give you the right midwives. In the name of Jesus. These dreams will not die in you. They will be birthed in the name of Jesus. Men, hear what I'm about to say to you. God gave you, <laughs> God gave you a human being with gift and grace. And I need you to understand. I mean, I can't remember where we were, but I was, I was talking about how God is so wise that he made sure that we need something from each other. Because if men could carry babies, if men could, I mean, they, they, will be, they, they will be so arrogant. You know, men can be... Their ego is like this. So, at least God made sure there's something we can't do. So that you can humble us to respect what we have. And then, unfortunately, some people, that's all they say. Kumajomolo, de, 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 de. B, you want to be. If you know, doesn't know more than baby, you, you have, try one pregnancy. In fact, try one menstrual cycle. And, 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 and know... That is the meat that they pull that doesn't cut. That they call no more. Thank you. you. You get it. That that you understand that there is a blessing. There is a blessing. And the truth is, there's no comparison. We we are too different. God brought us together to form one. We must appreciate each other. I know we talk to women about appreciating men, but I'm also saying to the men, appreciate the women in your life. Thank God for them. That's why Mother's Day is an opportunity for you to remember to do what you should do every day anyway. But then it's a special day so that you take time to say thank you to your mom, to your wife, to your sisters, even to your daughter. To say happy Mother's Day. You're going to be a great woman, a great mother. It's a beautiful thing to do. It's a beautiful thing to do. And that's why we do it as a church. Because it's a beautiful culture to have to celebrate one another. Amen. I see the seasons changing in your favor. I see God turning things around for your good. I see you testifying of the goodness of the Lord and of the grace of God in the name of Jesus. I see the Lord lifting you from glory to glory, from victory to victory, 
from blessings to blessings in the name of Jesus by this time next year you will testify in the name of Jesus I'm praying for the dreams in your hearts now they will come to fruition they will see the light of day in the mighty name of Jesus you will rise to be all God ordained for you to be in the mighty name of Jesus your life will matter it will count in time and eternity it will be significant in the mighty name of Jesus you will prosper beyond your own imagination in the name of Jesus it will be well with you it will be well with your marriage well with your business well with your children your husband will rise up and call you blessed your wife will rise up and call you blessed your children will rise and call you blessed in the name of Jesus it is well with you stand to your feet in the name of Jesus we are grateful 